Hello everyone, David Shapiro here. So I'm going to try a new thing, and this is going to be a systems thinking uh, podcast. So this is going to be an audio only format, obviously, and we're just going to roll with it and see how it goes. So for the inaugural episode, I am just going to answer the question, what is a system? We need to unpack what a system is before we dive into systems thinking. So there are many definitions of systems out there, but for the sake of systems thinking, this is how I define a system. A system is a collection of nodes, linkages, and boundaries. Now, I'm not going to just leave you hanging with that because we need to unpack what each of those three components are. So again, that's nodes, linkages, and boundaries. So first, what is a node? A node is a person, place, or thing. It can be concrete or uh, abstract or conceptual, but the idea is that a node is some kind of entity. It is, it is a thing that participates with other things that either may be similar to that thing or different from that thing. So for instance, a system of people is going to be the interaction of many people. So democracy is a system. A school is a system. A company is a system. All of those are systems of people. Now you can have other kinds of nodes. So for instance, in a car, you might have uh, mechanical nodes, you might have electrical nodes, you might have chemical nodes. So n nodes can basically be any kind of self-contained entity. And then they don't even necessarily need to be self-contained, they generally are. So a person is self-contained, a building is self-contained, uh, uh, the motor of a vehicle is self-contained. Now that doesn't mean that they don't have many, many linkages or interconnects between uh, themselves and other nodes. But generally it is, it is some kind of en entity person, place, or thing, uh, concrete or abstract. Now, the second part of a system is the linkages. So uh, linkages are those connections or interconnects um, that, that bind all of the nodes together. And so linkages uh, transmit uh, one or more of these three things. They transmit matter, energy, or information, um, or what I might also call signals, so information or signals. Um, and they transmit those between two or more nodes. And so what I mean by that is, uh, so say for instance, um, the fuel lines in your car, those are linkages that transmit matter in the form of gasoline or diesel from the fuel tank to the fuel injectors. So that is, that is a matter linkage. Um, conversely or similarly, the power lines that bring energy to your home are linkages that bring uh, electrical energy from the uh, the power substation to your house. And so that's another kind of linkage. And then another, uh, the, the final kind is an information linkage, which uh, actually what you're listening to right now, uh, a podcast is a kind of information linkage. The internet is uh, provides a bunch of kind of in, uh, information linkages. Now, many linkages are both. So for instance, or, or more than one. And so what I mean by that is the fuel lines that carry gasoline from your fuel tank to your motor, those are carrying matter, which is a, it's, it's a chemical form of energy. So that is technically both matter and energy. Likewise, uh, the electrical signals that are, that are carrying my voice through you know, the internet and time and space to you are energy and information. So generally, linkages carry one or more of those. Usually, it's not entirely pure just due to the nature of physics, but matter, energy, and information are what are transmitted over the linkages uh, between nodes. And a node, so the linkage can be, it has to be between two or more. And so these linkages, in some cases, you have many to one. So a many to one linkage is lots and lots of other connections coming to one central thing. And so... Uh, this would be an example of all the data streams that you consume on a daily basis. So you have, uh, you know, all your internet signals, all the information that you get from friends and family and workplaces and that sort of thing. So in that system, at, in the, at the information system where you are the hub, that is a many to one linkage. Now, uh, the opposite of that is a one to many linkage. And so in this case, me as a content creator, I am the hub and I'm broadcasting outward. So that is a broadcast kind of linkage. And then in many other cases, so you might just have a one-to-one -one ratio, uh, such as the connection between a fuel tank and the motor. So that is a one-to-one -one connection. Now, it could be more sophisticated than that. So for instance, 
in a uh, in an airplane, you have several fuel tanks and several engines to connect to, so you have several to several. Uh, but the point is, is that um, that is the nature of linkage linkages. And then finally, the last part of a system is boundaries. So boundaries, um, the way that I define it is that is the sphere of influence of a system. That is the domain in which that system has the most influence or impact. And so in some cases, the boundaries of a system are very hard. They're literally rigid, uh, such as the, the body of a car or the skin of a person um, or the exterior of a building. In those cases, the boundaries are physical and they're visible and they're tangible. Uh, now, in other cases, though, boundaries are a little bit more flexible, fuzzy, or porous. So there's kind of four types of boundaries that I keep track of. So rigid, flexible, fuzzy, or porous. And I'm not going to unpack each individual one, but you can kind of get an idea. So an example of a, a flexible boundary is a friend group or a social group. And so imagine that you're at the bar with some friends and then you know some new people show up and join your group and then some people leave. That is a flexible boundary where there is a, there is a social container, there's a social system where the boundaries are constantly being updated. So that is, that is a kind of flexible system. A fuzzy system would be one like, let's say uh, the boundaries between um, one neighborhood and another. It's not necessarily clear where the boundaries lie um, and it kind of depends, or it's it's a little bit vague, or it's not, you know, it's more conceptual, so uh, conceptual boundaries tend to be fuzzier. And then you can also have porous boundaries, where you do have a boundary, but it is it allows the influence of other systems to go in it or through it. And so this is an example of like a highway system, or a state, or a city. The boundaries between many of those kinds of systems are very porous, meaning they intersect with many, many other systems. Um, if a human system, however, is porous, that's usually something you go to the doctor for. So anyways, this has been the first episode of Systems Thinking with David Shapiro. Uh, what is a system? Uh, quick recap, it is a collection of nodes, linkages, and boundaries. Nodes can be a person, place, or thing, concrete or abstract, some kind of self-contained entity. Linkages are connections that transmit matter, energy, or information between two or more nodes. You can have one-to-many, many-to-one, one-to-one, and so on. And then finally, boundaries, the sphere of influence of a system. And you can have rigid, flexible, or fu bleh, bleh, rigid, flexible, fuzzy, or porous. There we go. I about said futzy. You can have futzy systems too. Um, rigid, flexible, fuzzy, or porous boundaries between systems. So this is my working definition of systems as it pertains to systems thinking, and I hope you tune in next time. Thanks for listening. Cheers.